welcome everybody. Again, we're going to have a fun video here that we're going to do extreme beginners drawing. I thought we could do maybe some simple uh, paint brushes here. Um, so we'll take these two paint brushes essentially and we're going to set them up on our table in front of us over here. So it's going to be out of sight really. Or maybe we can leave it here in the in view. Let's try doing that. The only problem we use, problem is I have a my table is uh, on a slight angle. So these are starting to move around a little bit. I'll probably try to take a s tiny bit of tape, some artist tape here, and we'll just maybe I'll, I'll wrap this uh, tape up a little bit. Like so. We'll do the uh, larger square brush first. So I'm going to put it so we could see it in the screen here, like that. That looks good. I'm going to put that tape on the bottom of it, like so. And then I want to put it in view here so you can see it, like that. Okay, that's one. And we'll take our second brush here. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll take some tape, artist tape, and just fold it around so that it's uh, sticky on all sides. Then we'll put it on the back of the brush like so. And then we'll just line up our brush over here and say we're going to put it here. And let me maybe move this over here a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to begin drawing. Uh, Th this technique or method that I'm going to use now can really be helpful if you're just starting out for the, like you're really still a little bit shaky with um, doing, let's say, straight lines. Um, I used to do this a lot um, years ago. Uh, I can, I find I can do okay with maybe doing some straight lines when it's like a, a brush. Paint brushes are kind of, they have different curves and things to them, so they don't always look, or they're not that difficult to kind of draw straight in a sense, but we can always use a ruler. And um, we'll draw, we'll just get ourselves a straight line across here. Very lightly though, just a very, very light straight line. You can barely see that. Let me make it a little darker. Okay, you can see that. And then we'll do a second one over here for our other brush, like so. Like that. So we can make two lines. For one for each brush, and this will keep us kind of on straight course here. Um, once we're done drawing with our pen, we're going to use a, a Sharpie marker. For this this tr this um, drawing, let's use a Sharpie marker. And we'll use a, an eraser, a kneaded eraser. Once we're done doing the Sharpie marker, we can erase the uh, pencil lines. But now that you can kind of see what I did here, I'm going to erase it a little bit. And you can even do it lighter than that. As long as you can see the line at home on your paper, make it ever so slightly light so you, it's easier to erase when you're done doing your Sharpie pen drawing over the top of these. But basically I'm going to use them to kind of keep on track for my, my brush. So I'm going to start out with the larger flat brush up here. And I'm just going to center it the brush on the line. So I'm going to go a little bit up here and a little bit here to get this metal part right here, the ferrule of the brush. So once I have that, that's really like my starting point. It really is a good starting point, I think. And then what I can do is I can start off with the hairs of the brush and they're pretty much even, like so. like that. So it's basically a rectangle. The hairs of the brush, like so. And then what I can do is I can kind of look right here and say and judge the, the the ferrule compared to the brush hairs. It's about the same, a little bit larger. So this metal ferrule here is larger than the brushes. So I could even take my my pencil and say okay, if this brush here is we can almost use this as a 
as a guide. So we can just we can just use this as our guide, and we can say, okay, that's right. The tip of my finger is where the ferrule starts. So we use that, and it looks good. So we have our first measurement. Then we say here, what is this? This is to the ferrule is about to here. So I hold that with my pointer finger, just like that. I don't move it. I keep it still. And I say, okay, right there is, I use my other pointer finger. I put my other pointer finger down, and that's where that ferrule starts, where the wood is, the wood handle. So you can kind of see how that works. I'm just using, you know, just matching it up. Instead of taking the brush itself and putting it over here and tracing it, which you can do too. If you want it for fun, you can just take a brush like this, tape it down to your paper and just do a trace around it. You can do that for just for fun. But to, to draw it like we're going to do here, we're just going to use the same. We don't have to we don't have to enlarge our scale or make our scale smaller. We're going to use the same exact measurements. So it's just a matter of you could even take a ruler like this and say, okay, let's use this ruler. How much is the the brush hair is one inch? And we come over here and say, okay, one inch. The ferrule is one inch and seven eighths. One inch seven eighths. So, and then if you don't want to use the ruler, you can just use this gate. You know, this way. This is another way of using. It's like you're making your own ruler by just using your pointer finger right there and saying, okay, that's the tip here. That's the other where the metal starts. That's your brush hairs. Got that. Come over here. You say, okay tip of the pen cap and then the ferrule is right here so I use my finger there lift it up bring it over set it in place and there we have it that's the other metal tip there and you just do this the rest the same and then over here you can take your pen and say how much is the rest of the brush and it's uh, just a little bit less than this full pen so I just take this here put this down and say okay it's a little bit less than this And that can, that's the end of our brush there. And that's all. It's really that simple. And then we're just going to start here and say, okay, we've got our, our uh, hash marks from where we can start and stop. And then we're going to start going this way. And now we have these couple of uh, crimps on our ferrule. Those are the crimps that crimp it to the wood and the hairs together. So we just do this. And then we do that there. And then we can go this way, like so. Then we can do the, that's the first. That's the second one. And then this is the third one here, like that. Then we go like so, and we make this come out a little bit. It gets a little wider there. And then it starts to come back this way. And then we can start over here again. It might be easier to start back over this way. And then start to slim it down this way here. And there we have it. So that's our first brush that's completed. And then we can make our stripe on the uh, back here. The uh, like that. And then the writing is not so much important. I don't think you have to worry about that. You could put the writing on if you want, but I think I'm just going to leave it like this and we might even, I might paint this, you know, paint it, but um, color it in with my, my pen. And then I just erase the line a little bit, but I don't even think we're going to see that line so much. We're going to color in the, so we're going to maybe do some lines over here for our brush, some lighter lines. So I'm not using I'm very lightly touching the pen to the paper and I'm not pressing down too hard and I'm kind of using a, a quite a bit of an angle on my pen like this almost like usually when you draw with your pen you know you're kind of like this straight up and down you get those darker lines and then here if you turn your pen on an angle like this you can get those lighter lighter lines for the hairs of the brush because the hairs of the brush are very very fine there we have it then there's a little bit of a shadow over here. I don't think I'm going to worry with that too much. And then the rest, we can kind of, this here is a little darker, so maybe we can color this in. 
for shade descent. And this is just a fun time of let's get one one medium tone on here like let's hash this in and then we can darken it up on the bottom and top as you'll see the shadowing is a little darker on the sides okay and the same over here now it's a little darker over here so now I'm going to do a little bit darker. I'm going over with a second bit of that light shading we were doing for this. You can also make a better, smoother um, line on the top of your brush if you want while you're doing this second line here, or the second shading. What I'm trying to, you can kind of see it's darker on over here and over here and it's a little bit lighter across the center so we're going to try to capture that a little bit here just a little bit it, you, it actually looks really good if we do that if we does that make sense if we just add that little bit of light it does look a little better than just maybe shading it just once and leaving it as it is and again I'm going to straighten some of these smooth out some of these lines that I did before that don't look as good as they could if we could we always usually have a another bit of chance to get things a little more accurate when we're, we're doing uh, pen drawings and pencil drawings now it does look kind of like you know it's it's just some hashing to have fun to do a little quick study. It looked better with paint for sure with watercolor paint. So you could even draw this on watercolor paper and then just paint in your dark and light um, paint your uh, colors and you could also add the gold here and leave this white. This is kind of like a goldish color very very light. It's like a silver really and this is like a golden kind of green hairs there. Okay, let's start our second brush. Um, I will just take a quick break since we did this first brush here. Um, I try to just take a quick break. Maybe I'll do a little shadowing here. Like that. And then sometimes trying to do reflections and things with like metal. I just try to follow what I'm kind of seeing. I'm just seeing a little bit of a line there and then we could even do the shadow under here if you want to do the shadow under here you do it really really light barely noticeable I just try to follow what I'm seeing here the shadow is over here so it is a protruding out from beyond this edge the shadow underneath and then it's pretty dark actually it's very noticeable and you can see it probably on the camera angle too you can see it it's a little different than what I see because I'm away from the camera the camera is like this looking straight down at the scene I'm back away from my table here standing so it does look maybe a little different than what you might be seeing but I definitely see shadows here and it kind of it's like this like this and it goes like so so it's a little bit smaller over here and then it gets a little bit larger over here the shadow
And again, we're practicing our 10 or 15 minutes a day. We've already got in our 10 or 15 minutes doing this one brush. Let's take a quick break just for like two minutes and then we'll come back and we'll do our second brush and we'll have our project done for the day for our drawing project doing two brushes, a brown brush and a flat brush, watercolor brushes and hey, this is what it's all about, getting in our time. Put in those 10, 15 minutes every day. You can't believe how well you're going to actually pick up on drawing if you're just doing a few minutes of a day just like this and that's it. And you just put your pen and your pencil down, you come back the next day and you're working 10 to 15 minutes. If you can do more, great. But if you can only get about 15 or 20 minutes of time where you've got to do a lot of other things, you're busy. I know a lot of people have ex extremely hectic schedules, very busy. Uh, I'm that way too. I'm very busy. So, but doing 10, 15 minutes again is going to work great for you. Just uh, try to just do it every day. Some days you might only be able to do five minutes, but that's fine. Five minutes is still going to break that um, uh, break the habit of skipping too many days. If you kind of just get in at least five minutes a day, and then some days you do maybe 10 or 20 minutes and a half an hour, but as long as you do at least five minutes a day, um, then you're really going to just set that habit of every day you're doing your, your practicing. Because it's just like if you played guitar or piano or if you were a singer and you were an opera singer or a um, pop singer, the people that do all those, um, you know, play instruments and musicians and sports athletes, they all put in their practice. They get into the gym if you're an athlete, like a pro football player, baseball, golfer, all these athletes, they're in the gym every day, one, two hours a day, without fail, every day they're there working out. And that's why, you know, they have to be doing that to keep up their um, stamina, their strength, and keep building their skills and make sure their body's all finely tuned so that when they're out there performing uh, their sports or their music, they're going to be at their top form. So you want to be at your top form when you're doing your artwork, and that's all you have to do is just remember, you got to get in at least five minutes a day, 10 or 15 is even better, and then maybe on the weekends, if you have a little more time, you do a little bit more, but at least five minutes a day, and that'll, again, keep your habits to just automatically every day. After a while, after you do this a couple months, two, three months, you'll have the habit and you'll just be doing it. Actually, science, scientists have studied that if you do something for 14 to 21 days straight, it becomes a habit. So if you um, drink a gla one glass of water every day for 21 days and you make that a habit, after 21 days to a month, 30 days, you'll have the habit and you'll always be grabbing that glass of water or bottled water and having a glass of bottled water or a glass of water because you just made it a habit. So that's all it really is, is habits are actually just things you can actually train yourself to do. They just, you have to actually do it though on a consistent basis and daily is the best way to do it every day. And it's just, if you do it again for 14 to 21 to 30 days, most all people will always create a new habit when they do that. So if you're going to do this every day for about, again, 20 to 30 days, it'll be a habit and you'll watch. Every day you'll be going and grabbing your pen and saying, I got to do a drawing for five minutes. And you'll just do it automatically. You won't even be thinking about it. You'll always be like, oh, where's my pad? Where's my paper? Got to do it. Got to do it. And you'll just, you'll get into the swing of it. Okay, so we'll come right back and we'll do this last uh, watercolor brush here and we'll be done for the day with our 10 to 15 minute exercise here. Okay, all right, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back again and we're going to actually start our second brush here, our second watercolor brush. And we were just talking about building our habits five to ten minutes a day that's all it is and um, here we're gonna start this one here this brush so let's start the same way we did with this one let's start out with the tip of the ferrule of the brush which is right where the brushes meet the metal ferrule let's start that one here and this one is a little bit over so let's kinda keep it the same as far as this brush is a little bit over from this one so let's take this and come down here and say okay that's where the ferrule is the beginning of the ferrule here the tip of the ferrule and then let's do the brush hairs. Brush hairs are about, I'm going to again scale this a little bit and say, okay, it's about right to that little ridge on my pen. I can kind of see it. I don't know if you can see it there. The, the ridge in the pen right there where my fingernail is right there. So I'm going to take this and say, okay, where's that? I started my line here. So that's, that's the tip of the metal ferrule right there. I put my line here, which is right there line it up there and then say okay that's the tip of the uh, brush here right there then I say it's very very pointy the brush so let me start out the point like that and then it flares out like this and goes into the brush like that 
and it goes like this, like that. And there we go. I'll color, I'll put a little bit of color into that with the black pen. And we have it. Now I might do this one a little differently. I'm going to leave this like, like this metal color. I'm not going to make this black maybe. I mean we could do that. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll just stick with what we're looking at here. So um, we're going to go up here. This tapers up a little bit. And again, let me just take a quick how that's about here. So if I just go over here and say goes to about there. And I just kind of get a visual on that and say, okay, there we go. Like that. And there's a little bit of waviness there, like so. Okay, there it is. And then we can do this. We can maybe we can leave a little bit of light on the uh, a little bit of light on the uh, Okay, I'm going to leave that little bit of light on the center of the ferrule. It's like a black, painted black enamel baked on paint that they use, or it could be, it might even be, I think it is, it is painted, it's a painted metal. And we're going to pretend there's a little bit of light catching the top of it like that. Out there. Okay, and then we're going to start with our brush here. And then we can look and say, okay, it's thinner here, it gets wide here, wider, and then it goes and it tapers down this way. So we're just noticing that that it does get thinner here, wider, and then it, ta it tapers down. So then I'll take my um pen and just gauge how how long the handle is and it's just past the S and Sharpie on the cap. So this cap has, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's a little, in, there's a little script. Uh, uh, it looks like they have a raised um, Sharpie script, script written on the cap, which is like a little extra design to the Sharpie pen, which is really nice. So I'm going to use that and say it's going to be a little bit past that S on the Sharpie, the word Sharpie on this thing. So, okay, it's, it's about there. I slide my pen this way and just go, okay, right about there. And that's about where the tip of the brush is. So now we're going to go, again, we said it gets a little wider here. About here is its widest point, and then it tapers down over here. So I'm going to go up here, kind of round it up a little bit, and then start rounding it back down that way. And that's about where we have the tip of the brush there. And then we can do the same thing here. We can just wide out here a little bit, and then it comes down this way. I think I over-exaggerated it, but that's okay. It looks all right. I think so. So I over-exaggerated the brush a little bit here but it's okay we'll um, we'll do the the number six here like that so this one we're gonna do a little um, let's see if we can do the simply Simmons here and I think it's better to do it quick And then over here, just I'll make up my own writing over here. Just a little bit there, a little bit there. Good. A couple dots and dashes and something like that or other, and you're good. And there we have it. So now I'll leave this one white. I'm not going to do much shading to it. We could do a little. Looks like it is darker on the sides over here, like so. Like that. 
that. Take your time a little more. If you find that you you're, uh, need to take more time with your shading, please do. We could even at this point say, you know what, we could always change our, um, you could always change things a little bit while we're doing this. We could say, you know what, I'm going to use a little bit of a pencil, like a, um, a pencil here, and maybe I'll darken this up with that up here. And you can shade this in a little bit. Like that. And shade in the shadow a little more. Then you could try this exercise with just the pencil. So you would use just maybe the pencil to do the drawing just like we did with the pen. And then you just shade in with your pencil. And it would probably look a little better. I know it would look better if you're going to do everything in pencil. We're mixing it up here. We're doing the pencil and the pen. So that looks a little bit... It's not as pleasant as using just all the same uh, drawing tool. But you can do some more additional um, shading with this. You can kind of get that little bit of that, that little bit of that crimp on the uh, ferrule there, and then here it's darker. It's like that greenish gray. This is a little darker, so we can get this a little darker. That's all. We're having a good time here. All right, so I hope everyone had a great time. Thanks so much for drawing with us. And I always say, if you're just new here, thanks so much for coming by. Um, great to have you. Hope you'll be coming back to um, do some more pencil drawings and pen drawings with us. Um, I always mention, too, feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button down on the right-hand side of the screen here. All that does, really, is it just lets you know when our new videos are coming out each week um, so that you'll always just be notified by YouTube. It doesn't... Uh, doesn't mean that you'll get any you, you, you won't get any text messages or emails or phone calls or any kind of silly nonsense like that. It's just basically it'll just be an alert on your YouTube channel when you when you go onto YouTube. It'll just you'll have a little notice on your you'll see one of my videos right at the top of your list of videos that you might want to watch. So that's all it really does. And so this way we can keep in contact and you can um, pick right up again and, and do another drawing with us or another painting. We do tons of paintings on my channel, nothing but watercolor paintings. We do every type of subject matter you can imagine as well. We do flower paintings. We do seascape paintings, beach paintings. We do landscape paintings with trees and barns and cool things like that. We do animals and birds and any kind of things, you know, with uh, dogs, cats. We do beautiful, um, uh, still life pictures with cups and saucers and flowers and fruits and vegetables and uh, interesting things like that so we really we do everything we do figure painting too we do we draw and paint the figure uh, we do um, the portrait type style drawing and painting of portraits um, that's not my main thing I do all the time but I definitely do you can look back in my channel I do have portrait work done I've got figure quite a few figure paintings in my archives in my YouTube channel so you just type in I always tell everybody if you want to just find anything just type in my name Chris Petri and type in the subject you want to see Be beaches um, boats I've done a ton of boat paintings so you can just type in Chris Petri boats you'll see 10 20 30 videos all from the last five or six years I've done you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on all these subjects so have a great time with it go back check out my old videos if you want my newer videos are better I use better equipment nowadays when I first started I was I started with a cell phone using a cell phone actually to create my videos and then I've upgraded now and I have really good camera equipment and good lighting and uh, better microphones and things like that so um, but I'm really happy you're here keep coming back peruse through my old stuff if you want but stick with us every week here by subscribing you get all my videos you'll watch along with us you'll grab your pencils your pens your paper and you'll have a great time and you'll learn watercolor and you'll also learn drawing which is really a critical part of watercolor you have to really learn how to draw and it's not that hard it's just really five or ten minutes every day and, and you'll get it within 
six months to a year, you'll be drawing really good, decent drawings if, if you're just putting a little bit of time in every day. Okay, all right, so we'll see you on the next video, and happy painting.